A cold frame is an incredibly useful tool for any cold climate gardener to have. Cold frames offer protection from pests. They enable you to extend your growing season earlier into the spring and later into the fall. And for some really cold hardy crops, you could even keep those going all through the winter with enough extra protection inside. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built these two frames using long lasting cedar wood and some old windows that I picked up for cheap at the local used hardware store. So even if you're not already familiar with cold frames, you probably are familiar with the concept behind them because they work exactly like a greenhouse. They're just much smaller and you probably wouldn't want to try to get into one unless you're a Houdini gardener or something, in which case you should probably start your own YouTube channel. I'd watch that. So anyway, just like a greenhouse, the cold frames allow sunlight to come in through the clear lid and the heat energy from the sun is trapped inside, creates a nice warm environment that is generally warmer than the outside temperature by about 15 to 20 degrees, which can make a huge difference when it gets really cold in the winter. Cold frames are also very easy to build. The trickiest part about them is getting that angle. And of course that angle is to point them more toward the sun as we're in the northern hemisphere. The sun is more to the south, especially in the winter. You could also make this construction simpler by just making a regular square box and using the soil to build up around the back and the sides to make more of a, an angled surface tilted toward the sun. Now, as I said, I got these windows for cheap. I went to our local Habitat for Humanity Restore and I found these for $1.50 a piece. So I checked them out, made sure they were in good shape. They're really good construction heavy hardwood, they're in, in great shape. They both have two panes of glass in them, which is awesome because that's going to provide more insulation. The air that's trapped between the glass will help to insulate even better. Since they're older windows, that means the glass is a little bit loose in them, so I, I may go around and try to add some caulking to seal those up better but I'm really happy with these. There are some minor differences between the two windows, but I'll get to that in a moment. So as with any garden project involving lumber, there's always the consideration whether to use treated or untreated lumber. Without getting into the debate on the safety of that, even though treated wood is tested and rated to be safe for garden use these days, and a lot of gardeners use it, I will say, personally, I chose to use cedar for this simply because I know it is going to last a lot longer than treated wood anyway. And it did mean that I had to change from using two inch thick boards down to one inch to get the price roughly similar to using treated wood. But I don't know if there's much of a difference in insulation value between one inch and two inch might not be very much, uh, but still it was more just about getting something that would last a really long time. And there's still that little bit of peace of mind knowing that I'm using something that is natural and, and keeping in line with an organic garden, but still it's more just about an economic choice. So with all that being said, let me go ahead and show you how I built these two beauties. Go ahead and roll the footage. Any time now, just, yep, yeah, there you go. I built these frames using one by six inch boards for the back and sides, one by fours for the front, two and a half inch deck screws for most of it, plus a few one and a half inch screws for the corner posts. I also bought a one by two for those corners, but it turns out I didn't really need that because I had plenty of scrap lumber to use. We need to keep in mind that these boards are not actually one inch thick. They're 13 sixteenths, and we need to remember that for later. Let's start with the backboards using one by sixes. First, I measured the width of the window. I picked a good hole number. 30 inches looks pretty good. I centered that within the window frame, and that should work. 
New boards are usually cut with up to a half inch of extra length, so I like to trim off just a tiny bit to have a nice clean edge to start with. I measure out 30 inches, mark it, draw a line with a straight edge, and cut. I check the boards to make sure they're the exact same length. Then I move on to the front boards using 1x4s. Now we need to measure the depth of the window, and I make sure to get all the way to the edge because that has to line up flush with the back side to install the hinges. 23 inches should be good for that. And here's where we need to do a little bit of math. The side boards need to go in between the front and back boards, so that means we need to subtract the thickness for both of those. Remember the boards measure 13 16 so if we double that, we get 1 and 5 8 Subtract that from the 23 inches we measured, and we get 21 and 3 8 Once again, I trim off the end for a clean edge, measure out 21 and 3 8 and mark it. I do the same for the rest of the side boards. Make sure they fit perfectly together. And there we go. All the basic cuts are done and we can start putting this thing together. I start off by lining up one of the back corners and find that sometimes the boards are not cut exactly right when you buy them. Oh well, we'll do the best we can with it. I always drill pilot holes first to make sure that the wood doesn't split when we put the screws in. Another thing about using thinner boards is that you have a bit less wiggle room when you're putting in your screws. You need to make sure they go in straight. I finish joining the other back corner and move on to the front. You'll notice the top piece is extending past the other boards because that's where the angled side piece is going to attach later. And now we've got the basic frame of a desk drawer? Well, I guess we'll just keep working on it. So then I set the pieces in place to mark where the angle is going to come to on the front. Then I use a straight edge from another board to mark the angle. Make sure to mark the angle so that the smooth finished side will be facing out on the frame and not the rough side. And now we can get an idea of what the piece will look like once it's cut. A table saw works best for a cut like this, but since I didn't have one of those, I had to clamp it down to a sawhorse and use a circular saw to make the cut. I made sure there was enough room so I wouldn't chop into the sawhorse, and that I would have some room without the saw running into the clamps as I cut the board. And now, party time. Whoops. Now we can check to see how these actually fit. So it may not line up perfectly, but I'm not worried about that because the whole frame is going to be flipped over and any gaps here will be filled in with soil. So I finished screwing in the side pieces and now we can see that for the front corners, the boards are offset, so they're interconnected at that joint. In the back, however, we need to do something to keep these together. And that's where the corner posts come in. I used 1x2s for the first frame I built, but I decided to use the scrap lumber for this next one. I made sure to mark these a little bit below the top of the frame. And I put something underneath the post to lift it up so it would be shorter on that side as well. I used 2.5 inch screws to go in through the thick side of the post. And then 1.5 inch screws for the thin side so they wouldn't come out the other end. Now we can go ahead and flip it over. So now that all these edges are lined up perfectly at the same angle, we have a nice flat surface on which to install the window. We can test out how it fits and get it lined up for the hinges. I use a pencil to mark where the holes will go. Carefully drill pilot holes. 
and install the hinges. And there it is, all finished. We can just use scrap lumber to prop the window open for venting. The other window was a little more difficult because I had to use a jigsaw to carefully cut off this angle piece so the window would lie flat against the frame. I also sanded that down for a tighter fit. And look at that, there's two of them. I'm really excited to start using these to extend our growing season and hopefully continue to harvest cold hardy leafy greens all throughout the winter. We don't have anything growing in these just yet, but in a few weeks I'll be able to show you what we've got. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.